Hi everyone, Niall here. Welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Today we're going to talk about how you can create slab edge profiles in Revit. Okay, um, not just slab edge profiles, but how we can do localized edge thickenings, as you can see in front of you, as well as localized bonded up stands that go around the perimeter of a slab, which is really useful if you if you have any kind of containment issues that you have to worry about, as well as for certain construction details, the upstand is actually really beneficial. On top of that, we're also going to talk about the likes of lift pit details and how we can generate them very easily in Revit and slab edge thickenings or, or, or centralized thickenings, I should say, in the middle of a slab and how we can detail out the boundary of those correctly so that we have this neat continuous detail, as you can see in front of you here. OK, so I won't delay any longer. We'll get straight into it. Just so you know, this model in its entirety is available from the first download link below. OK. And it is a standard structural portal frame, as you can see, including all the groundworks that we just talked about in terms of the ground floor slab, as well as on the first floor, a actual um, profile metal deck slab, inclusive of the correct recess um, cantilever values and that kind of stuff. OK, so if you're generally just getting started in structural modeling, you're just starting to foray into it. I could highly recommend this as kind of just a, a sampler or a jumping off point just to see how generic modeling is done on the structural side of the fence but without further ado i won't delay any longer if you like this content you know what to do down below hit the like button comment subscribe all that good jazz all that good jazz good jazz good stuff and um also to note that the second link down below is the 8020 bim discord community channel i'm there most days as are a number of other people and we're always happy to, to answer questions so if you have any particular questions about your revit workflows head on over there hit us up and we'll do our best to help you out so I won't delay any further. Let's get straight into it. And I hope you get value from it. So number one is how to create a slab edge in Revit. So going into our model environment here, OK, you can see that we have a standard structural frame built in here. OK, and within it, we, on the ground floor, we have our slab at the moment. OK, and what we need to do is put a boundary thickening on the slab. OK, so the first thing that we actually need in order to implement a slab thickening in Revit is that we need to actually create a metric profile family. OK. I'm not going to go into this tutorial. If this is something you need to see, please let me know in the comments below. But it's quite simple. You go into a new family metric profile and you draw your slab edge. OK, and just to give you a quick idea of what our one looks, you can see there on the right hand side, probably under my head. Yes, it is. Let me scroll down <laughs> um, that you can see slab edge thicken. So if I right click and I press edit, you can see here's our slab edge here. You can see that the profile usage on the left hand side in the properties dialog is set to slab edge and the material for model behavior is set to concrete. OK, and it really is this simple. Now, what we could do is we could apply dimensions that we could control within the uh, project file itself. So we could we could actually apply type driven parameters and um, associated dimensions so that we could say, oh, we want this to be 400 thick by 800 long or something like that. And we would be able to change that in the live project browser and we just keep duplicating the profile as we see fit for every instance that we want. But in this case, we're OK. We're going to go ahead and load that as a profile into the project. Sorry. And then we're going to go to our floor drop down and you can see that we have floor slab edge. OK, and I'm going to select that and you can see that we have a vertical profile offset and a horizontal profile offset. We can give allowances for rebar cover. In this instance, we have default because of the, uh, the function of the template. Um, we can give an angle of association and all that kind of stuff. But quite simply, all we're going to do is we're going to select the leading edge that we want to place the slab on. OK, and in this instance, I want the slab edge to go all the way around the boundary of the slab. So when I press tab, you will see that we get a chain all the way around the floor slab. And when I click that, you can see it places the slab thickening. So turning on the section box there and pulling it back into the view, you can see there we have our slab thickening. Now, in this instance, it is auto joined, OK, because the material was set to as concrete. So it's, 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 it's picking up within the, the family profile itself. If you remember the material usage, it was set to concrete. So in this instance, when we go to edit type, you can see that although we haven't associated a material yet, it is picking up that the floor is also concrete and it's auto joining the materials, but we would naturally want to go in and make sure that we are assigning our slab edge as a material and in this instance it would be concrete uh, i can't remember which one it was i think it might be concrete cast in place 
press OK. No, it wasn't concrete cast in place. But as you can see, because the material variation there, it's now unjoined. So I'm just going to undo that for the moment. Okay. So that was number one, which was how you can place a slab edge thickening in Revit. So number two is how can you create a concrete upstand in Revit? And truth be told, we actually create a concrete upstand for, let's say, boundary bonds or um, just general containment on a concrete slab in the same way that we would a slab edge in Revit. Okay, So again, um, you can see that uh, we still have our existing slab edge in place here. And we, at the top level here, want to create a, a, a basically a, a 150 or 200 mil bond all the way around using a concrete upstand. And much the same as we did previously, you can see on the right hand side, I have this upstand metric profile already loaded in. Okay, So when I go to edit type there, you will see here's our standard upstand. And again, if we wanted, we could dimension this out, give it the type uh, properties that we require, and then drive the dimensions from the project site. But closing that and going back to the project, we want to use that as, as our slab edge. So as we did before, we're going to go to floor slab edge okay and in this instance because of the orientation and the relative position to the um the origin let's say of the the actual profile family i know that it's actually going to place it on the top and to the left in this instance okay so as we did before i'm going to say edit type in this instance and i'm going to duplicate and instead of having slab edge i'm going to call this conch upstand okay and in this instance, you can see on the profile, we had a slab edge thickened is the original profile, but I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to pick upstand. OK, now uh, ignore the, the name of the upstand. It was actually a duplicate from the original slab edge. And that's why you're seeing the variance on the slab edge. OK, so you can see that I've got concrete upstand. And what I'm going to do is, as before, I'm going to select the top line in this instance, the top of the slab, not the underside of the slab. I'm going to press tab to select the full chain of the boundary and I'm going to click that. Okay. And as you can see here, we have positioned a slab edge upstand. Okay. Now, what we cannot do in this instance is we cannot split this. So slab edges, unfortunately, cannot be split. I can't split it independently. But we do have a door opening here. So how do I resolve that in this instance? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the node at the bottom. Okay. And you can see that there was two nodal points that were intersecting there. So it can be kind of tricky. Um, but locking that there and then tab selecting the node underneath. I'm going to pull that back all the way to, well, forgive my uh, my crude um, setting out here, but that plane there. Okay. And then also, again, I'm going to go to the floor. Sorry, floor even. <laughs> floor slab edge. And then I'm just going to select that one isolated area there. And yes, we're going to have a duplicate situation arise. But all we need to do again is to select the end node and drag it back to a point that we're contented with. And now we have our slab edge all the way around, as well as a supplementary secondary slab edge, just to, sorry, um, upstand, just to close out that one area there. And we're still able to keep our doors clear, okay? And, you know, be in a bonded situation. You probably have something like an echo drain or a, a gully trap or something like that to catch any potential spill. But um, going into our section box view then and dragging that across, you can see not only now do we have our slab edge on the ground floor, but when we zoom in, we actually have a lovely neat upstand all the way through as well. And as you can see, because the profile has the chamfer, you're going to get the same chamfer as you would in normal circumstances. And obviously then when you're using an architectural floor finish, for something like this in kind of um, a, a light industrial context, you might have something like a Mipalam or an Esprit or something like that. That will actually cove and wrap up on that corner if you so wish. Or you might have something as simple as a painted epoxy. But that will give you an idea very quickly. So, so far, we've created both a slab edge thickening as well as a concrete upstand. But both are used are created using the slab edge mechanic, let's say, in, in Revit. Um so that that's true if we had a floor opening on the first floor as well. So if I go to the 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 end here, and I'm just going to edit this, and let's say I select this top floor here. Okay, and this top floor is actually a composite comp floor deck. Um, and if in in section you will actually see that you can see the deck profile. I've done a full tutorial on that previously. If you want to go check it out, it'll be in the eye in the corner. But let's just say for argument's sake, 
we had a an opening in this floor and forgive me instead of actually placing an opening i'm just going to place um a quick uh, quick box in the sketch there okay so we have this floor edge here again we can very simply just go to floor floor slab edge make sure we have our concrete upstand selected and there you have a a concrete upstand um which acts almost as a uh, let's say a, a fall barrier in, in this instance um, and you would have something like a key clamp railing or something around that or a piece of rising equipment or something through it in order to protect um, people from going down okay so um that's how simple uh, concrete upstands are in Revit um and yeah other than that I have seen people use walls previously for this the difficulty with the walls is getting the chamfer is kind of tricky in the absence of using something like a profile um to the top of the wall so you're almost creating a stacked wall just to create a 150 or 200 mil upstand in my opinion it's maybe just a little bit excessive for what you need now when you have a situation where you've got multiple uh windows or sorry doors down one elevation it does become maybe a little bit laborsome because you might have to place two or three or four of them and pull the extents back at the end just to have the openings but it's it, it to my mind it is probably the most efficient way okay so that was number two how to create a concrete upstand in Revit. so number three is how you can create a localized kind of central slab thickening within the kind of midpoint of a slab somewhere okay so as you can see here um on our plan uh, you can see i've left a little open in this floor here the ground floor and obviously i'm not showing the substrate or anything like that on the uh, the ground floor slab in this situation but what we need to do locally here is we actually want to increase the depth to double the floor thickness okay and we want to ensure that we have a clean 45 angle off the base of that then for the slab thickening to emerge correctly in section so what we're going to do in this instance is um we are going to locally create a floor slab to infill the area that we 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 want to actually have the thickening and then we're going to put again another slab edge on the boundary okay so to begin with what i'm going to do here is i'm going to press ctrl c okay after selecting the ground floor and i'm going to go to my modify paste and i'm going to align the same place and you're going to see i'm going to get a duplicate worn it's going to say oh, highlighted floors overlap okay so i'm going to right click and i'm going to select previous and that means i've selected the previous the, the, the newly copied slab and i'm just going to edit boundary and as you can see i've only got two boundaries i've got this little hole in the middle and this bound external boundary so i'm just going to select there uh, the the outside boundary i deleted it and then i'm just going to select a span direction okay and i'm going to finish okay and as you can say cannot slip create slab edge that's fine i'm going to press delete elements okay and that's because the existing slab had a slab edge all the way around it. and in this instance you can still see it says in situ concrete 225 but what i want to do is i'm going to edit type here i'm going to duplicate and i'm going to call it existing concrete 450 millimeter and i'm just going to change the overall thickness of that to you can see i've got a sans cement screen in this for instance as well and um, so i'm going to send it overall to to 400 there and we're going to keep our sand cement screen even with the rest of the floor so i'm going to press ok and i'm going to press ok and now when i go to my section view here let's say i pull the section through here you can see that i have a localized thickening okay so that's all well and good but the difficulty is we don't actually have a resolution to um the 45 degree angle and how we amalgamate the two okay so pulling that back here momentarily and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my um architecture tab and i'm going to go to slab edge but the first thing to note is that i've actually brought in a another profile and that additional profile is um a little 45 degree uh profile that you can see will actually cover the um the connection between the thickened area and the, uh, the the standard depth area okay so you need this 45 degree kind of uh, chamfer around just to kind of distribute the concrete correctly um, and also it's just a it's, it's just a neater detail so this is actually called our um I, i'm actually going to go file save as family and we're going, we're going to call it um slab thickening edge and that's fine okay and we're going to load it into the project and then we're going to go back to our floor and we're going to say floor slab edge we're going to go to the underside of this case and what we're going to do is we're going to select this boundary and we're going to press okay and it's going to say one element is completely inside the other i'm going to say unjoined elements and unfortunately what you can see there is i've actually made an error in this instance because what i've done is i've implemented the concrete upstand at the inside 
what I never did actually is edit type duplicated. Okay. And I'm going to call this um, slab edge thickening 45 degree closing detail. Oh, sorry, 45 degree closing detail. I'm going to press OK. And then I'm going to change the profile there to slab thickening edge. Okay, I'm going to press OK. And as you can see, I've got one side the other. And then finally, I'm going to flip the orientation of that. So if you come to that kind of situation where one is embedded inside the other, don't worry. You don't actually need to go back and edit the family to get the uh, the, the relationship of the, the profile to the intersection of the origin on the family. All you can do is just use your little flip arrow here. It flips the profile using the vertical axis in this instance. And as you can see, you've got your 45 degree now. And when we pull this back, through the section you will see that we actually have a very neat detail and finally we can go to our modify and we can join these provided they're the same materials now i haven't gone through the process of actually associating these all as the correct same materials but as you can see now we have this beautiful detail where we've got a lovely consistency between our um concrete upstand and our floor slab and our slab edge thickening the one thing i want to do in this instance actually is i just want to edit the type for this floor and I'm actually going to just delete both of these layers and I'm just going to build that up to 225 press ok press ok and finally on the central one here I'm going to add a type and I'm going to do the same I'm going to delete delete and I'm going to change that to 450 just so we're just working with the one concrete material and you can see the consistency of the material now there's no breaks there's no anything once the materials are set or in this case they're not set they're they're just set they're waiting for their assignment um what you will get is essentially a, a join condition that will present it as such, okay? So that was number three, how to create a localized central slab thickening in Revit and detail it out correctly. Number four, how to create a lift pit or a slab recess in Revit. So not all the time do we want a thickening, but sometimes we want the actual localized reduction in the slab for something like a lift pit, for something like a pit scales, for any given number of utilities okay that we might need um often equipment needs to be recessed obviously often we need some sort of sump arrangement or something like that okay um so looking at screen here we have this provisional lift core here just thrown in um for an example and i put it directly over our previous thickening okay so the process is the same as the thickening what we would do is we'd create an opening that we need in the original slab and then we infill it with another slab and then neaten the edges with the 45 degree slab edge profile. So in this instance, the change is very simple. What we do is we come around and we select our previously thickened slab that we had for part three. Okay. And in this instance, I'm just going to change that back to in situ 225, but I'm just going to give it an offset of minus 225. Oh, sorry. Apologies. Press OK. And here we can see straight away that the detail is immediately working we've already given ourselves a minor offset value and you can see how neat this remains now what we might need to do in this instance is i actually think that this detail is a little bit uh, insufficient because what we would actually do if you look at this this pinch point in the concrete isn't enough so the reality is what we'd probably do is still have a combination we'd have a thicker slab locally under the lift here even then the standard slab design and we'd also the reason we'd have a thicker is so that we don't have this pinch point that's less than the average slab width. So this slab below the lift or below the recess may have to be 350, 400. And that means that our slab edge profile will need to adjust accordingly in order to accommodate it. So that there is another example basically of how we can use our slab edges effectively to, to realize another utility, let's say, in our slab design. Okay. So... That about sums up the video today. Um, if you have any questions about this at all, please let me know if you think there's anything I've missed out or if you have any specific questions regarding um, structural concrete design, generally speaking, please just fire me a message and I'll do my best to help you out. Um, it, it, it seems to be something that uh, a lot of people default to to walls and that kind of thing and these kind of janky solutions for what, you know, the reality is you saw the workflow here, relatively straightforward, okay? So, as ever, I'm Niall, this is 8020BIM, like, comment, subscribe to all that good stuff. 
any questions, please just leave them down below or head on to the Discord community server there. I think it's on the second link in the description. I'd love to have you there for a chat. If you have any questions, I'm there most days just to quickly fire you a response if you need it. Okay, so be good, mind yourselves, and I'll see you for the next one. Take care now.